classes. And those adult classes cover all kinds of subjects, not just plants and botany, but things like photography and painting and cooking and exercise, all kinds of things here in the garden. Anyway, this is our last stop. If anybody wants to deboard here, now's the time. Otherwise, please stay with me and I'll be right back with you to wrap things up. Okay. Two and a half tons. They're connected to a keyboard. And during the summer months, we had caroliniers come from around the world to play it. <coughs> and now as we roll up here, this isn't an official stop on our tour, but I stop here anyway because I got the keys of the tram so I can do that. But this is my favorite view off to the right. The river on our left. A lot of people call that the Skokie River as well. Now we've just entered our Dixon Prairie. And this is 15 acres of a recreated prairie. And I want to emphasize it's a recreation, not a restoration like our woods. This area looked a lot like the Skokie Lagoons. So we decided to make several types of prairies out here. It's just flowers. Now to the right of the track, you'll see some flower beds. Those are all part of our Lavin Evaluation Garden. And the plants that you see in them are our hybrid plants that were created by our scientists and botanists right here in the garden. Those pretty little trees uh, just to the right side that are turning those towards Because that island is reserved for the souls of the immortals. Now legend has it, it's built on the back of a sea turtle. And if any mortal man tries to approach that island, those trees that you see that are so carefully groomed like that, most of those trees are Scots pines. And they're groomed in a style called cloud top pruning. We do that for several reasons. One, to make them look old because the Japanese revere things that are old. Secondly, to make them look kind of far away and unobtainable. And lastly, in the wintertime when the snow falls, the snow just rests on those branches, looks like little clouds hovering above the island. That is the island of everlasting happiness. And if you look to the far shore, you'll see the base of our waterfall. Now our waterfall out there is a man-made waterfall and it soars 45 feet above the garden. It's got a couple of trails will take you all the way up to the top, you get a very pretty view from up there. Plus, you have that extra added feature of being able to listen to the sound of the water as it cascades down the falls. Very soothing and peaceful. Now through the trees, you can see the second Japanese island. That's the island of the cool, pure breeze that features an arbor house with a zen garden. And a zen garden is a dry garden of sand and gravel, and we rake ours in such a way so it resembles waves crashing on the water. If you look through the trees, you'll notice that island does have a bridge. It's our zigzag bridge. And it zigzags for an important reason. And that's because everybody knows that evil spirits can only travel on a straight line. So if you've got an evil spirit chasing you today, if you run across the zigzag bridge, that spirit can't zig or zag, it's gonna fall in the water, and you're gonna have an evil spirit free day. <laughs> Just to the right of the tram is the stand of trees that were here before the garden was. It's a big old cottonwood tree in the middle. Most of these other trees are hawthorn trees. And we like the way they look so much, we decided to keep them all in place. We built our road around them, and we like to talk about them during our grand tram tours. If you look beyond the uh, trees to the right, you'll see the third Japanese island. That's the island of the auspicious cloud. That features uh, a shown house. Now, a shown house is a Japanese scholar's summer retreat. And our shown house was originally built in Japan, where they built it without any hardware, no nails or screws. The same people who built it, disassembled it, brought it all back here.